My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I'll be with my friends. I'm trying to make you some money. My job, not just to entertain you, but to educate, to teach you. Call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. The algorithms have taken over, and it's not good for the averages. Dow seeking 113 points. S&P tumbling 1.21%, and the Nasdaq nosediving 2.14%. Sell, 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 sell. Right now, the algorithms say sell tech. Sell, sell, sell. Whenever interest rates go higher, which is how you get a wipeout like we had today. Then they buy tech when rates go lower, which is what happened yesterday, because the buyers decided inflation was peaking. Today, those buyers have now collectively decided we are not at peak inflation. Almost nothing matters right now at an individual company unless it gets a takeover bid from Elon Musk. Well, hold on just a second. Even that didn't matter by the end of the day. More on that one later. Now, you know I think there is a bull market going on underneath all of this nonsense. And it's a bull market in companies that make things and do stuff for a profit and return some of that profit to you, a shareholder, as long as the stocks are inexpensive. I know it's a big mouthful, but it, it's what can work in this environment. And there are stocks. There are stocks that meet the criteria. Today, though, we got still one more demonstration of the need to pivot out of momentum tech stocks and into the growth at a reasonable price names that trade on what we call the fundamentals. It's why we have a very high cash position for the Chapel Trust. You can follow that, of course, by joining the CNBC Investing Club. Now, we've been even slaughtering some of our pearls of momentum to preserve cash for the moment when this new bull market pulls back and we get a better entry point, which leads us immediately, of course, to our game plan. First, understand that when banks as diverse as standout Goldman Sachs, the average JP Morgan, and the very poorly performing Wells Fargo all invoke Ukraine as the principal risk factor. Wells Fargo? not inflation, we have to take our cue from what happens this weekend, as our government's been pretty darn good at predicting the next move by the Russians, although it hasn't mattered, of course. Uh, we haven't done much about the, although the intelligence has been good. There's no real urgency to resupply the Ukrainians. I was doing some, number, some numbers today about how little what we sent means for, uh, I didn't want to go into it other than to say that I think our leaders are paralyzed by Putin's nuclear threats. I cannot believe how obtuse the West has been on this issue. Putin wants to somehow reconstruct the old Iron Curtain, except what he really sees himself as more bizarre. He's a real historian, this guy. I think the worst evolved into a stalemate, but it would be really bad if we let Russia eke out a win. How about earnings? Bank of America reports on Monday, and I think we're beginning to see this behemoth assert itself as the world's number one bank. I bet it won't disappoint. The main reason? Because CEO Brian Moynihan has quietly turned Bank of America into a technology powerhouse that's already converted multiple generations, not one, but multiple, into mobile banking users. The deposit base just grows and grows. That's going to help when the Fed raises. The costs go down and down, and the execution gets better and better. What is not to like here? At the same time, Brian himself has become the spokesperson for how banks must do more for social justice, for employees, for charities, and for general human empowerment. By the way, this is not lip service coming from this man. This is community banking going national and in many places international. People who believe in this stuff are voting with their feet. Tuesday's a fascinating mix. So many great companies in the running. Just in the morning, we get Halliburton, the oil service company that's becoming one of my travel trust's biggest positions. Then Johnson Johnson, busy breaking itself up to create more value, as well as Travelers, a boring but really good insurance company. And Prologis, a tremendous logistics real estate investment trust. It's a cacophony of greatness, all worthy of your trust. E-commerce has made Prologis one of the greatest stories of the last decade. I keep trying to show it to you. I, I, I wish it would come down so we could buy it for the trust. Now, next, Katie Huberty, that fabulous Morgan Stanley tech analyst, just slapped the buy rating on IBM today, which is fascinating alone because this is a, the, the quarter that I expect CEO Arvind Krishna to deliver a terrific one that we can grade him on. He spun off the slower growing businesses, kept the fast ones. Should be IBM's time to shine when reports after the close. At the same time, we hear from Netflix, oh, this is tough for me. I mean, look, I created FANG many years ago, the, the acronym, to reflect the biggest momentum growth stocks. Netflix was the key to the acronym. But we're now in a streaming overload that nobody seems to be able to notice Netflix as much as they used to. Uh, you know, I still think they could charge more. Their product's so great. It's really a bargain. 
But um, it, that would help the stock to go higher. But Netflix is just not as bull as it was a decade ago, and it's hard to see how they can get that spark back. You know what happens, of course. You'll say, hey, listen, I'm watching Tokyo Vice. And someone will say, is that on Netflix? They'll say, no, it's a HBO Max. I'm watching this one. It's on Hulu. I'm watching I mean, you know. You don't even know what anybody's watching? That means Netflix is lost in the shovel. Wednesday's the beginning of earnings overload, so let me just focus on the highest level area. As Procter & Gamble comes down, P&G, if it does, I am leaning on making the largest position in my travel trust, which, of course, you, again, you can follow by joining CBC Investing Club by saying this to, to Jeff Marks, my partner, just this morning in our morning meeting. We think that this one is perfect post-pivot. After the close, oh, oh boy, after the close is Tesla. Big shocker he chose to report on April 20th, huh? I have to tell you that Elon Musk is such a dominant figure of our time that I bet he wows us on the call. What does that mean? One, Tesla's Chinese production is going well despite the lockdown. Hey, look, Matt, uh, Matt Boss, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Jeff, uh, Boss just told us today, this is very important, that Nike's having a good quarter. And it made me think, we had him one earlier, if Nike's having a good quarter in China, why can't Musk? I bet you he shocks us there. That's going to be one. Number two that he's going to wow us on, the factory in Germany. I think it's crushing, believe it or not, BMW, Audi, all the guys, you know, Mercedes. And then three, the Cybertruck. Maybe it's ready. Triple header. I, I, I'm telling you, I could, you know, all this stuff obscured, uh, all the stuff with the, with the um, Twitter obscured what I think is going to be an amazing call. All right, this past week, the most important earnings call came from Delta, but airlines of all places. CEO Ed Bastian said the bookings are the best he's ever seen. If United Airlines says the same thing on Wednesday, then boom, the group's got more legs, as does the travel uh, cohort in general. See, Marriott was up again today. What will ATT tell us when it reports on Thursday? Now that it's shed the pastiche that was Warner Media? Maybe nothing. I'm not a huge believer in this one. We have T-Mobile as a market share taker. We have Verizon steady growth with good yield, and ATT's more like the rotting carcass that they're feasting on. I also want to know about a company that I have not cared about in a decade. I can't believe I'm finally mentioning this. You probably don't even recognize the symbol. It's Freeport McMoran. Now, uh, Freeport McMoran, that's a copper miner. Why do I care? Because copper is a terrific proxy for the Chinese economy. And Freeport will tell us where the copper's going. Unlike the bank CEOs, I'm as worried about what will happen in China as in Ukraine. Because if the Communist Party continues its insane efforts to contain Omicron by locking down vast swaths of the country, their economy could collapse and they may even have a famine, which then breeds unrest. Shocking, but it could happen. Now, Dr. Copper might tell us that China's in big trouble, so let's pay close attention to Freeport. Finally, on Friday, we have a report from a company that I think is a screaming buy in light of what we've heard from Delta, and that's American Express. I don't know how this one gave up so much ground. We had a nice week today, uh, given what we just found out about Delta. These are MasterCard of Corp buyers. It's time for the company we call Express simply to do the same and go back to where it was. And in the new world where oil's among my favorite sectors, we need to know what Schlumberger has to say. This is the largest oil service outfit on Earth. Historically, they've relied on the State of the Union for their industry, the industry. That, they're the guys you listen to. Plus, Somerset is the single best view of what's happening in Russian oil and gas. Remember, the Russian war of genocide against Ukraine is funded by the EU oil and gas payments. Right now, $38 billion since the war began. Much, much more than the cost of the war itself for Russia. No wonder they continue it. Will Russians one day have a decline in oil production? I bet Somerset can trace out what is about to happen if they stop drilling. The bottom line, it's a wild week. But again, the bonds, the genocide in Ukraine, the terrible things that the Chinese are doing to their own people, they're the stories that do matter, with Treasuries running roughshod over everything once again. Aaron in New York. Aaron. Hey, Jim. I just got a question about uh, American Tower. Mm -hmm. I picked it up a couple weeks ago uh, to diversify a little bit, but with all the recent uh, – market news and variables coming out and hitting the housing market, do you still think the REIT sector is a good play, or do you think inflation is going to entrench the housing market? Historically, uh, your second half is right. Uh, historically, they've done poorly when the Fed tightens. Uh, I have backed away from them. I sold uh, uh, Crown Castle and a nice profit for my capital trust. Just the wrong place, wrong time. Uh, and, that, you know, it's hanging up there, Crown Castle is in particular, but I got out around here made money and moved on. Let's go to David in Florida, please. David. Hey, Kramer. Just want to ask you quickly, is this a good time to buy Qualcomm? Okay, now, my travel trust has been buying it. It has not done well. It's part of a cohort that nobody wants. They announced a really big deal uh, with, a, with a, the number nine car company in the world today. Nobody cared. They are going to have unbelievable growth. Nobody cares. They sell 11 times earnings. They boosted the dividend. And I am willing to take the nobody cares and say, you know what? I'm going to be right. 
We're buying. We want to buy some more next week. I think this stock's too cheap. And I'm thinking more than just two weeks, okay? Now, look, we got another wild weekend. I think bonds, Ukraine, and don't forget China will be the stories that matter next week, with treasuries running roughshod over everything. Oh, man, money today. CarMax reported this week, giving investors a peek into the used car market. That's a peak and a peak. That's, that's a play on words. And now I'm giving you my take on the space. Then we're wrapping up our Garb series and taking a look at some underappreciated industrials. And Zoom has been beaten down from its COVID highs. I'm hearing what the video conferencing company has in store from the company's CFO. It's going to be AI. Stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.